Hello everybody and welcome back to this tutorial and in the previous one we finished off with our server and reverse shell program. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to actually see how we can actually make an executable file out of our reverse shell. First thing that you want to make sure that you have is the actual wine program and also you want to have the drive C folder installed with Python 27 on your Cal Linux machine. Now for those of you that already covered the actual eternal blue attack and the system hacking section you should actually have all of this already if you don't have all of this already make sure that you refer back to the uh, wine installation video or the basic eternal blue attack there i explain how you can actually install the wine program on your cal linux machine once you actually finish that you should go to the root directory dot wine drive c uh, python 27 and in Python 27, you should have this actual folder or directory that is called scripts. You want to navigate to that directory type ls. And right here, what we want to do is we want to actually install the pi installer. The pi installer basically allows us to actually be able to convert our Python file to the exe. The first thing in, that we want to do in order to actually install the pi installer is we want to go one directory back. And we want to run this command. So we want to run wine root dot wine drive C. So we are specifying the full path Python 27 Python dot exe and then dash M pip install by installer. This will install the required library for us. And then we're going to be able to actually execute this library in order to convert our files to the exe. So if everything works properly, we should be collecting pine installer as we can see right here. And we should have it installed in just a few seconds. And then we're going to actually uh, transfer our reverse shell to the Windows 10 machine and see whether our programs work. If they do work, then that is the basic example of a reverse shell. So you should have a pretty, a little bit better knowledge than you had previously just by using the MSF console and the MSF Wenom tools. Here it is, it says successfully installed. So it seems that everything worked correctly. And if I just go to the scripts once again and type ls, I should have a, lo a whole lot different files right here than previously, as you remember, we only had like five or six files and now we have our pineinstaller.exe right here. So now ne let's navigate to our root and then desktop where our two files are. As we can see, they are right here, the server and the reverse shell. And in order to actually convert the reverse shell to exe, we need to run once again the wine command. So wine root dot wine drive C Python 27. Now we want to go to the scripts directory and take the pi installer actual file. So pi installer dot exe. Uh, we want to specify which actual file we want to convert to the exe. So the name of the file reverse shell dot py or however you actually called it and we want to add two different options which are one file so we want everything to be a one file so when target clicks it it doesn't have to click a bunch of different things they can only, only click one file and execute our actual payload and no console means that it will not prompt the actual target anything to the screen once they actually open the file so it will seem like the file is not even opening as you will see in just a second so press here enter and this should actually finish converting our actual file to the exe. The only problem with this is that the actual program is going to be a little bit bigger than it should be for it will be several megabytes large, but that doesn't really present us that big of a problem. So it doesn't even matter. As we can see, once it actually finishes converting it to exe, we are going to get three different folders, should I say, or files, uh, two directories and one file. As you can see right here, if I type ls, we got the build, the dist and the uh, reverse shell dot spec. So the first thing that you can delete is you can delete the build directory and you can delete the reverse shell dot spec. Now make sure that you actually don't delete the actual reverse shell program uh, because then you're going to have to code it once again. And now we want to navigate to the dist directory and right here should be our reverse shell dot exe. So the next thing we want to do is we want to actually plugged in our USB drive. We want to then copy the reverse shell.exe to media root and then uh, the USB drive right here. As you can see, it will take a few seconds because this file is a lot larger than the actual MSF Wenom payload. 
Now we can go one directory back and we can unplug the USB drive. Go right here, so let's navigate reverse shell.exe. We put it on our desktop. So here it is, as we can see this is an executable. It has a Python icon, but I will show you that, uh, how you can actually make a combination of a reverse shell and an image with the icon uh, attached to it. So it will look exactly like an image. For now on, what we want to do is I want to go to my desktop where my server program is, and I want to make that server program an executable and then run it. As we can see, it says listening for incoming connections. And now if I simply just run this program, let us go back right here, we can see target connected, shell, and then the IP address from the target, as well as the port from which the target connection is coming from. And now if I simply just type who am I, we can see that we're getting the results from the actual target back to us. As we can see, I'm this uh, machine right here. And it is correct if I simply just type IP config because we have a Windows target. You will see the output of the IP config command right here, as well as the IP address of the target machine. So you can simply just type netstat-nr and get the output of the netstat command. For example, you can ping google.com. If you want to, you are simply just pinging from the target machine and then you will get the results back. As we can see right here, if I press here enter, we got the results back. Now sometimes if you want if you want to run uh, larger commands or not larger commands, but the commands that will have a larger output, such as for example, this nets that command that I ran previously, it will have to print it out from two different steps. But you can fix that either by adding the JSON library, then adding your receive and send function over a while true loop that are going to actually accept bytes as long as they come. And then it will be able to actually print out or output as many bytes as you want or as big as the result is. But that is something for a little bit more advanced shell. So right now we only wanted to see how we can actually create a connection between two machines and execute commands from these two machines. And now we can see that the connection is hanging. That is because uh, it sent the empty command back to the target and now we don't have a result back. So these are all of the problems that you will have to fix if you actually wanted to create a real reverse shell, but we're not really going to do that right now. We only wanted to see how we can actually create a program that is going to be able to execute the commands on target machine. And as you can see on our Windows 10 host, we don't see anything popping up. So there is literally nothing here that indicates that the actual reverse shell is running unless they go to the task manager and see it there. If you want to, you can actually experiment with this, add a bunch of options to this, fix some problems because there are some problems right here, such as for example, as I said, this one, the connection is hanging because I pressed enter. So you would fix all of that with a couple if else loops and so on and so on. But more about that for some future course. Uh, for now on, we only want to see how it works. So basically, uh, that would be about it for this actual coding section. So what we coded right here is two programs, the server, which is the listener on our Cal Linux machine, and the reverse shell, which is the actual payload or backdoor on our target machine. It is really simple, the simple as it can get, and it only executes commands on target machine. That will be about it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope I will see you in the next one. Bye.